With the release of the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1660 Ti, the idea of mid-range performance has been redefined into a position where great performance can be found for a price that's more than what we'd usually be paying. If you're looking for mid-range performance, but you don't want to pay these exorbitant prices, there are options out there that can give you great 1080p and 1440p performance for less money than you'd expect. So which card can you find, and what do they offer for the price? Starting off with probably the most expensive card on our list, the GTX 1070 is an excellent card that offers 1440p 60fps at below $300. If you look on eBay, this card can be found for around $250, and other flavors on other sites can be found for even less. Performance wise, this card performs nearly identically to the recently released GTX 1660 Ti, and also has 2 more gigs of video memory. When looking strictly at performance, this card beats out the 980 Ti, the Titan X, and beats the 1060 and RX 580 by a significant margin. When looking at power requirements, the 1070 is also relatively efficient, with a 150W TDP and an 8-pin PCIe power connector, meaning that any min system can accommodate this card. If you're looking to upgrade from something like a 1050 Ti or an RX 570, then the GTX 1070 is a fantastic upgrade, and is an easy way to bring 1440p capability to your setup. This next card might be a bit controversial, as it was deemed a disappointment by a lot of those who purchased one, but now that we're over a year removed from the release of this card, it's had time to show us how it can stand the test of time. The RX Vega 56 is a great 1070 substitute if you're looking to game at 1440p or even get into content creation. With a sub $300 price tag, this card can be found for similar prices as the 1070, and is abundant on the used market. On paper, this card is nearly twice as powerful as the 1070, having over twice the amount of cores and having the ability to perform at just under twice the amount of raw calculations. With 10.5 teraflops of power, this card may not be able to soundly beat the 1070 in gaming, but it's a great content creation card thanks to the 8 gigs of HBM2 video memory. The only issue with this card that might push you away is its large 210 watt TDP with two 8 pin PCI power connectors. While most mid-range systems would be able to comfortably accommodate for this card, its power draw is more similar to the two generation old GTX 780 Ti, meaning that you need a decent PSU if you do want to purchase one of these cards. Besides that however, the Vega 56 is a great mid-range card, and if you want to get into content creation, then you can't go wrong with one of AMD's previous generation flagship GPUs. The next GPU on our list is an older card, but its performance nearly matches the two previously mentioned cards. This card is the GTX 980 Ti. On eBay, this card can easily be found for less than $230, and when looking at how this card is aged, it's impressive that this now 4-year-old card is able to offer excellent 1440p performance in 2019. Power requirements for this card are similar to the Vega 56, except this card requires a 6 and 8 pin power connector, meaning that it's less stressful on lower end PSUs. While this GPU may not be the highest end gaming card anymore, it still offers great 1440p performance. The downside to this card when compared to the 1070 is that the card only has 6 gigs of video memory, whereas the 1070 and Vega 56 both utilize 8. But if you're looking to give your system a 1440p and light 4K upgrade, then the 980 Ti is worth consideration, and is definitely worth the price. Moving on from the 980 Ti, the next card on our list performs almost identically to our previously mentioned cards, and can be found for significantly cheaper. The R9 Fury X was AMD's flagship GPU released back in June of 2015. Now that we're 4 years out from release, the Fury X can be found for just under $200 on the used market, and outperforms the more modern mid-range kings, the GTX 1060 and RX 580. With the fully unlocked VG core, this card requires a considerable amount of power, drawing 275 watts through two 8-pin connectors. With 4 gigs of HBM memory on a 4096-bit bus, this card has an absolutely insane 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, meaning that it's a great fit for content creation and other memory-intensive tasks. Overall, having only 4 gigs of video memory might limit this card in the future, but in 2019 and moving into 2020, this card offers great 1440p performance at a ridiculously low price. The last card on our list might be surprising as the performance offered by this card isn't 1070 class, but if you're looking to buy new, then this card is probably the best value midrange offer. The RX 580 is one of the hottest midrange GPUs that have ever released, and although it's now almost 2 years old, it's still a steal. 
Coming in at under $200 new, the RX 580 can be found in both 8 and 4 gig flavors, meaning that if you are looking to utilize high quality assets or get into content creation, then the RX 580 is happy to oblige with a large memory pool. Plus with a 185 watt TDP and a single 8 pin power connector, this card is incredibly flexible and will fit in most, if not all, mid-range systems. Offering performance nearly identical to the more expensive GTX 1060, the RX 580 can be found for significantly less, while also offering performance that's still excellent. If you're upgrading from a lower end card, for example a 1050 or an RX 560, then jumping to the RX 580 is definitely a great choice, and it will give you a great experience. So, although mid-range GPUs are much more expensive, I have personally found that they're a much more worthwhile purchase in the long run. Not only do they have more video memory, but they also have specs that will let you power through games for years to come. While it might be a steeper upfront investment, it's definitely worth it in the long run, and you get to have a better experience for a longer amount of time. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons Kunal Hazard and Wolven Lunacy. Thank you for all your guys' continued support. And also, tell us, what do you guys think about this list? Do you agree with it, or do you think we forgot something? I can't wait to see what you guys have to say, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.